Hello beautiful people and welcome to part four of this astrology course. In case you haven't come across me before my name is Deborah Moore and I've been a professional astrologer for 30 years. So today we're going to start looking at the planets. Now we all have heard the names of the planets you know we've all heard of Saturn and Jupiter and and Venus and Mercury. But what do we really know about them? Now, just a quick recap. So this is the wheel of the zodiac and this is like a band of stars around our solar system. And our solar system is basically our star, which is the sun, which sits in the middle and then we've got all the planets going round it and then beyond that we have what are called the fixed stars the stars that don't move planets actually means traveling stars or the tra the wanderers okay so around that we have the fixed stars and the signs of the zodiac are part of this fixed star system. So the planets, if we imagine this is this just for a moment, because it's not actually how we draw a chart, okay? Remember last time I spoke about the having the sun at the center is different how we normally see a chart, we see the earth at the center, okay? But just for a moment, imagine this is the sun in the middle and we have the planets going around the sun like this and they take different times to go through their cycles and they're all doing this within the wheel of the zodiac. So at any one time, the planets can be in different places. In this next slide, you'll see a representation of the planets in terms of their places um, away from the sun. So Mercury is the nearest and then Venus and then us, the Earth. And then we have Mars and then Jupiter and then Saturn and Uranus and then Neptune and then Pluto. The picture doesn't describe the distances accurately. You know, it's like I once went to a park and it was like some of the planets were like within a few meters of the entrance of the park which represented the sun and Pluto was about three miles away you know so um, they some of them Pluto in particular is a very very long way away from the sun so but when we look at a birth chart we're looking at it from our perspective on earth okay so here I have another wheel introduce you to the next wheel of the Astro Lotus and around this wheel are all the symbols or the glyphs that we call them for the planets now they're not normally spread out equally like that in fact I've never seen a chart where the planets are spread out equally like that but I just wanted to be able to show you all the different um, glyphs and how we're in a birth chart we're looking at the planets against the backdrop of the zodiac in which they were sitting in at the time that the chart was constructed in that moment of time okay so in this particular the way that this wheel has fallen today the sun is in the sign of Aquarius okay and because Aquarius follows Capricorn the sun is at the beginning it's just entered 
into the sign of Aquarius, right? And Aquarius happens from about January the 21st to March the 21st. Silly me, that should have said January the 21st, February the 21st. If you don't know what your sun sign is, just pick up a newspaper or something, look at the horoscope section, see the dates, find your date and it will tell you your sun sign. So, so in a chart we're looking at the planets where they sit against the zodiac. So I'm going to take this down now because it's heavy. So the planets act like sub-personalities, they're like our sub-personalities, where the sun is, is the, like, the essence of who we are, and it's also about our will and about our ego. And the moon represents our emotional body, it's how we respond from an emotional way, and it's also about how we get our needs met. And so each planet represents like a different personal sub-personality within us. And the planets against the signs, the signs are like the dressing up clothes that the planet puts on. I'm a big fan of getting dressed up and acting out different sub-personalities. So we saw the sun in Aquarius. So when, during that time of year, the sun sort of takes on the, the cloak of Aquarius. It's like it dresses up as Aquarius. It carries the Aquarian qualities. And if you remember Aquarius, yellow, it's an air sign. And if you remember, it's a fixed sign. So we know it's fixed air. So when the sun is in Aquarius, it's carrying that quality of fixed air. So the moon, now let's say the moon was in Virgo. And Virgo, so it, that what I mean is that when we looked at the moon, the sign of Virgo was in the sky behind the moon. So Virgo, when the moon takes on the characteristics of Virgo, Virgo is mutable earth, right? So it's quite flexible, able to change, but it's grounded. It's about ma the material things. It's about, you know, um, the material world. So the moon in Virgo, that emotional body mixed with that mutable earth energy you put those three together and then you can see how that moon um, expresses itself and people will express in very different ways which is why I'm hesitating to give you specific examples because you'll find that someone with moon in Virgo may express that moon in Virgo in a very different way to somebody else with moon in Virgo but there will always be an element of practicality about it and an ability to change and to oh, consider something different and move into something else. Okay, so they may express it in completely different ways, but they'll always have that underlying similarity and quality. So, homework. So the obvious planet, and it's not really actually a planet, um, I mean strictly speaking the planets are Mercury to Pluto, but we call the Sun and Moon planets as well because they're part of the heavenly body system that we look at. So the, the key planet obviously is the Sun. And if you think about the Sun, it's it radiates, doesn't it? It shines and it's the, 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 the essence of life on this planet. You know, we would not be here if it weren't for the sun. It's the essence. It's, a, it's what everything else revolves around. 
it's it's m massively magnetic you know in holding all these planets into their orbits it has phenomenal solar power you know it's got like this nuclear reactor almost going on inside it it's it's our star and and from which you know we are stardust so there's so many ways that you can think about the sun it's orange you know there's a simple one um so what i would like you to do for homework and i'd really love to do one planet say a week but that's going to be quite a long astrology course <laughs> so um i think we'll we'll have to do it slightly differently to that so but i want you also to have time to really explore these sub personalities so we'll see how it goes so for the moment i'd like you to really get into exploring the sub personality of the sun first of all just get into what the sun means to you okay and then i want you to envisage those qualities in yourself if you like now some people find it really helpful to actually um, wear um, things that they feel represent their planetary energies so you could choose to wear orange or red um, orange is best or yellow a push wear some orange just just a scarf um, or you know a t-shirt or something or some orange jewelry and just get into moving into that sense of orange you know what does that solar sense have for you another thing to do if you're creative is to write something a poem or create something do a little drawing with colors or create a mask if you're that clever and you you feel inspired to do that or I, I once saw someone who was a Virgo put together this basket of all these beautiful things that represented Virgo for her. It was really stunning. So any way that you can find to actually really get in contact with your sun energy and there's no right or wrong, okay? So I invite you to have a go at that. So we're not thinking about the sign of your sun, we're just looking at the quality of sun, yeah? And what that sun energy means for you. And you may find that actually it does demonstrate quite a few uh, qualities of the, of the sign that you're in, because we can't help it, it's just natural. And then also, spend a little bit of time thinking about your will how do you what is your will what is it that you will be done that you will have done and we're not talking about like power over we're just more like how you intend something and um, that sort of energy because that's what the sun about is also about now you may find it really quite difficult to get into that energy because we don't all have strong sun placements. But just even a little bit is awesome. Okay, so we're going to do similar things with the other planets um, and we'll just see how it goes. So any feedback? is really welcome. Love you all. Thank you so much for watching and talk to you next time.